Let's meet some of the speakers for the Expert Witness Conference coming up in November, and we have a fantastic lineup, and you're going to meet them in a minute. We also have some really interesting subject matters, artificial intelligence in the Expert Witness, the annual legal update dealing with recent case law and changes in the law, how to avoid being sued as an Expert Witness, and also how to work as a digital expert witness with lots of evidence digitally produced for you. And finally, a debate as to whether it's better to give evidence remotely or in person. So let's meet the speakers. Hi, I'm Kath Clegg and I'm a lecturer in law at Cardiff University. I've also been involved in the assessment of ex the expert witness certificate for some time now. So my session uh, involves me taking you through a number of judgments over the last 12 months, all of which involve expert witnesses. It's a really useful session because what I've done is reviewed all of those cases that have taken place in the last year or so involving experts and try to pick out for you the most interesting ones or the ones that I think are the most interesting and hopefully the most useful to help guide you by giving you some context as to how those expert duties that we all know we need to adhere to, how they really uh, apply in context um, and also what can be the consequences um, sometimes quite severe consequences uh, if we fail to comply with them or, or if something goes wrong. So hopefully you'll find the cases as interesting as I do and that you will enjoy the session. My name is Helen Evans KC and I'm a barrister specialising in professional negligence claims at Four New Square Chambers. In my session, I'm going to be looking at claims against experts. It's been about 11 years since the immunity from suit was abolished in Jones and Caney. And I'm sure you're all wondering what's been the experience of experts since. Have many experts been sued? And if so, why? In my session, I'm going to be looking at the 2022 case of Radia and Marks, where proceedings were brought against an expert and explaining what they were about and where the boundaries lie. Then I'm going to be looking at how experts can find themselves on the wrong end of injunctive proceedings, for instance, in the 2021 claim of a company against X. And finally, and this is the bit they probably need to know the most, I'm going to be looking at traps for the unwary, both things that have come in the reported cases and things that I've seen in my own practice. I hope you can join me for my session. Hello, I'm Jock McKenzie. I'm a partner in clinical negligence at Anthony Gold Solicitors. And I'm going to be talking about how the court assesses expert evidence, and in particular, what the court looks at when considering an expert opinion. I'm going to focus especially on the need for logic in an expert's opinion. And I'm going to touch on the use of medical literature and logic in an expert's opinion. And, and these are important matters, practical matters, for experts to consider when preparing their reports and giving evidence at trial. I'm then going to discuss a couple of important recent cases about what can happen when an expert gets it really rather badly wrong. And then I'm going to finish up with a short summary of some of the other recent clinical negligence cases over the last year or so. All of these cases are very important to experts to keep in mind when carrying out their expert duties. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alyssa de Costa Wardman. I'm a barrister of many years standing and I practice in mainly matrimonial finance and Talata cases. And I deal with lots of experts, oh, ranging from forensic accountants down to occupational therapists that deal with earning capacity and stuff like that. Very excited to talk to you today. I appreciate lots of you as expert witnesses will feel some anxiety about doing the job and yet it's how you make a lot of your money. And you'll be feeling that anxiety because of the responses that many of you gave to the working party on medical experts, even though that's not what we're dealing with today. Um, you did that in 2020. Now, 
against that background, we've also had this dreadful case with the criticisms of Mr Justice Fraser in 2021 in the case of Beatty and Canham. I'll be examining that, I'll be looking at all those criticisms of expert witnesses, and I'll be helping you to deal with how not to get criticised by the judiciary, how to do a brilliant job as an expert witness, and I look forward to seeing all of you on the day. Hello, uh, my name's Andrew Shaw. I am a barrister at New Court Chambers. I'm a specialist barrister specifically in children and predominant of my, of my work is in public law, uh, which is care proceedings. I also practice uh, within the Court of Protection and private law, but I'm going to uh, try and assist you in understanding the working relationship that you should be promoting with solicitors, uh, with the clients who you are assessing uh, and with the court predominantly the judge. Um, care proceedings and public law proceedings deal, as you probably know, uh, with some of the most vulnerable people in society. Uh, those uh, that need uh, an assessment are needing the assessment because the social worker or whoever it might be, the guardian or the lawyers aren't able to help. And this is where you come in. It's necessary for you to assist the court and to assist the court in a way that's clear, concise uh, and to the point short reports, punchy summaries of what you really need to do. And in addition, uh, I'm going to give you some advice on the do's and don'ts of how to uh, liaise and uh, be a part of the corresponding system with the court via the solicitors, how to get the most out of it in an efficient way for yourself, uh, and how to uh, complete your evidence in the case in a, uh, in a forensic uh, manner, but also an efficient manner such that uh, you as an expert can hold your head held high uh, and be complimented by the judge at the end of the trial. Thanks very much. Hello, I'm Mark Kinnean Vicky. I'm an incident response and threat intelligence team lead at Quorum Cyber and I'm an expert witness in cybersecurity. No matter what your area of expertise is, we all have to produce reports of the same format and quality. These reports require us to disclose our personal information. The adversarial nature of the British legal system means that, irrespective of who's employed you, there may be an aggrieved party with your personal contact information. My presentation is going to cover what I do to protect myself and my family from nuisance, threatening or coercive contact. These techniques can also be used to help you manage your cases, as well as help identify when you may have suffered a data breach and also help protect your accounts from being compromised themselves. Hopefully it's going to be a lot of fun and I look forward to seeing you at the Bond Solon 2022 Expert Witness Conference. Um, hello, I'm Amanda Pinto, KC. Uh, I'm a barrister at 33 Chancery Lane, and I specialise in fraud, corruption, money laundering, and business wrongdoing cases. And I've had a lot of experience of calling on cross-examining experts. Uh, our session that I'm doing with Alexandra Felix is uh, about whether or not experts should be in the room or help called remotely. And I'm going to be focusing on why it's a good reason um, often to have the expert in court, uh, easier for the tribunal of fact, easier for the advocates and easier very often for the expert to get their point across. Hi, I'm Alexandra Felix. I'm taking part in the debate on the pros and cons of experts giving evidence remotely. Uh, as you all know, that became a feature of our proceedings um, during the course of COVID. 
Uh, and what that's demonstrated is there are massive advantages to having evidence in this way. Um, it, it quite obviously is more efficient in that you're all not traveling about trying to get from one place to the other and waiting around. Um, because the use of the process means that we are more likely to stick to our timetables. And of course, what one can't get away from is that it is quite considerably more cost effective, in part because we are saving money in not having people waiting and traveling. Uh, but also knowing that we've got to deal with it in this way means that we're, we're probably more efficient at advocates at getting through the evidence. Well, I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the speakers. I think they were absolutely fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to hearing them in November. I look forward to seeing you there.